Welcome back to Cricut Aviation. My name is Jim Payne, and in this video, we are going to make and install the rudder pedal rails. Um, that's these two rails that get mounted in the bottom of the fuselage that the rudder pedal pan um, actually slides back and forward on in order to give you adjustable rudder pedals in the Cricut. Uh, some of these parts are a little bit difficult to fabricate because there's a hat section underneath here that we have to fabricate by hand that we can't use a normal bender for. Um, and we also have to bend these to the curvature of the bottom of the fuselage. So uh, we're going to go over how to, uh, how to bend that the best way by hand. Uh, so if you please would like the uh, video, subscribe to the channel and stick around. We'll fabricate some uh, rudder pedal rails. So what I've done right now is I've just cut out the sheet metal um, that we're going to need to make these rails and I've pre-drilled most of the holes in these rails. Um, and let me show you on the plans exactly what these look like because these are going to be a bit difficult to form and from what I understand this is one of the more difficult things to have to make for the Cree Cree um, just because we have to do some shaping that uh, is a little bit difficult to do. So. If we look at the plans here, what we're basically making is this section here, this little hat section of material. And what I've done is I've cut out that piece of material and I've got the rivet holes, for the most part, drilled into it. Um, and what sits on top of this plate that gets mounted on top of here is the support tray for the rudder pedals. And the rudder pedals are actually able to be adjusted by sliding um, the pedal tray up and down these supports that run down the length of the fuselage between frame three and frame one. Um, so what we have to do is we have to take that piece of sheet metal that I cut out and bend it into this shape, which is not easy to do uh, because we can't do it with any conventional sheet metal bender because these are all these little bends here are too small and are too close together. So the bend here on the end is only like 10.6 millimeters, 10 and a half millimeters bend here. There's a bend here and then immediately there's another bend across the top. So what we're going to have to do is kind of do a combination of things. What I'm going to try and do is actually bend the legs on this first, just bend the legs up um, on both of these. Then what we're going to do is I will show you how we're going to actually form the center part. Uh, and uh, let me bend the legs first and then I'll walk you through exactly how we're going to uh, take some uh, MDF materials and actually make a form that we can press this down into to shape it into that uh, hat section. So. Let me bend these and I'll be back in a minute. So yesterday I finished bending the base of the legs for these pedal rails. And so I just bent this on the, uh, the brake, bending brake. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna form the hat section. And what I've come up with here to do that is I cut out some MDF form. So I created a slot here. And just below this is another piece that's exactly the same width, just so that I can screw this down on top of here and get a little bit of extra support since I did cut a slot through this. So we're going to screw this just down to this plate. And then what I did is I, I took my uh, uh, CNC router and I cut a piece that matches the width of what the inside of that hat section is supposed to be. Um, and this slot here is actually the, the dimensions of the outside of that hat section. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this and let me just stick this in here so it holds it up. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to take one of these hat sections that we need to form and we're going to set this right down the center of that support piece that I got. And then what I did is I took a piece of uh, 16th inch aluminum that I cut to exactly the width of the outside of what this hat section is supposed to be. And what we're going to do is we're going to screw this down on top of here and we're screwing through the holes that I already drilled in here for the rivets that are supposed to go down the center of the hat section that are going to hold the, uh, the the T piece that goes on top. Um, and I wound up getting some number four uh, screws that are just slightly under an eighth of an inch and then I found a drill bit that I can use that's slightly under an eighth of an inch so that when I drill these out to put these screws through we can go back and drill them out later to the eighth inch size when we actually drill for the rivets. Um, but what we're going to do is screw this down just like this on top of here. And then what we're going to do 
is we are gonna flip this over, and actually I've got this upside down. So this is gonna actually go this direction with this on top, down the center. Well, that didn't work. Anyway, you get the idea. We're gonna set that on top. We're gonna screw this down to it inside of here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this board with this screwed on it, we're gonna flip it upside down and we're gonna pound it down into that slot. And since this piece of aluminum here that I cut is exactly the width of this slot, when we push it down in here, it should bend this around the outside of that and down in the hole. We'll see if this works. I have no idea if this is gonna work. I, didn't, I haven't done this before, but I couldn't figure out any other way to try and do this by hand. Um, I don't have a, a, a press of any kind to do this, so we're gonna see if we can just put this in here. And what's nice is that because this sticks out of the bottom inside of here, once we get that engaged into this slot, it's gonna hold it in there straight. So when we pound it down, this shouldn't be moving around and we can hopefully uh, form that hack section right in the middle. So we'll see if this works. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a try. So let me just go ahead and screw the metal on top of here, on top of this, and we'll see what happens when I pound it down in there. It might rip the screws out. I don't even know. <laughs> so <laughs> let me try this out and we'll see what it does. Okay, so I screwed down my first uh, hat section that we need to form here. You can see I just put that piece of metal down the center. I screwed it down every other screw for now. Um, and the one thing I had to do is make sure that I rounded the edges on either side to create somewhat of a bend radius. And of course you can see my MDF form is already split, which I was kind of expecting it would. Um, even though I pre-drilled these holes, it still split a little bit. But uh, you can see I actually started to bend it a little bit. And what I had to do to get it th to this point was to actually just put it on its side like this and just put pressure down on it all the way across and I was able to start bending both sides. I had to do that in order to get that piece of aluminum flat down at the bottom so that I can start fitting it into here to form the rest of it. Uh, and this actually went pretty easy, uh, just bending it to that point. So I'm hoping I can just fit it down in the slot and then start tapping it with a hammer and these sides will continue to fold up. So we'll see. I don't think this is gonna last more than a, than a couple tries uh, because I think this, this MDF is gonna fall apart and the screws are gonna pop out and all that. But all I need to do is form these first two. So we'll just uh, keep working on it and see what happens here. Well, I think I'm gonna be able to call this a success. Um, so the only thing that I had to do is I did have to go back and just widen this slot a tiny bit because I just couldn't get this plus the material on either side to fit down into that slot and get it to bend. So I got it just a little bit wider and pounded it in there and it, and it bent over really nice. Um, obviously I haven't pulled it out. It's gonna have a little bit of spring back in there and probably the reason I had to widen this a little bit was because this uh, MDF split on the end. Uh, but since this is the first time I'm trying to do this, I'm gonna call that a success. We'll pull it back out and we'll take some measurements of it. I'm guessing it's a little bit wider, but I don't think it's gonna be a big issue. Um, I was able to just pound this in with a rubber mallet, so I just hit it with a rubber mallet. I kinda had to work from one end to the other because I had to get one end started. It's just too hard to pound in the middle because it expects the whole length of it to be all the way down in the slot at that point. But working from one end, just getting it down and just keep working my way back and forth, um, I was able to get that in there. So let me pop this back out. I don't think I can do it on camera here, so let me pop it out and I'll unscrew it and we'll take a look and see if there's, uh, see if this is still good enough to try and do one more with it. I was able to pry this back out with a screwdriver on the end and you can see it's got a little bit of spring back we gotta take care of, but uh, this is only 16,000, so I think once we uh, pull this back off of here, um, we'll be able to just use our fingers and just uh, kind of pinch it together a little bit to make it uh, nice and square. So I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew this and we'll see what it looks like for its final shape here. All right, well this turned out actually pretty decent. Um, I've gotta get some of the spring back out of it a little bit, especially down the center. Uh, but for a first try getting this shape made, I think I did pretty well. Um, other side looks pretty good too. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can just get the other one to this point. See, you can pull it together and it gets nice and straight, but I'll have to figure out how to get this uh, um, bent just a little bit more. Uh, it is a little bit affected by the fact that I have drilled holes down the center, so if I try and pinch it, 
too hard across here to get the spring back, it tends to want to try and bend it down the middle. So trying to keep the flats there, the, the top flat and square, at the same time trying to bend the sides in is a, is a little bit difficult. I was trying to put it back down in here and see if I could actually just get something in that edge to pound it a little bit, a little bit more to try and get it to spring back a little bit. But I don't know. I don't know that I'll be able to do that. We'll see here. Uh, so I'm going to go and see if I can use what I have here to get the second one bent and then I'll worry about trying to fix the little minor things that are wrong with this and then we'll uh, have to actually figure out how to curve this because this has to be shaped to the shape of the bottom of the fuselage so uh, I'm going to have to figure out how we're going to do that. Well this was the, the second one I bent and that one turned out just fine also. Um, so I'm pretty happy with this. I got to I got to pull it in the middle here a little bit more because it is uh, bent out. I bent the end here in just a little bit just to see how the shape would end up, which it does. Now I just got to figure out how to pinch it in the middle and kind of square this up a little bit more, but it actually looks it actually looks great. So I'm going to go with this. I'm going to see if I can clean these up a little bit. And then what we have to do is figure out how to bend these because these have to conform to the bottom of the fuselage. So I'm going to have to make another form to stick this in and to hopefully pressure it to the other direction. Um, I'll have to figure out exactly how I'm gonna do that because we definitely don't want this to, to all of a sudden start bowing out or misshaping when we start pushing down on it to bend it. All right, let me finish cleaning these up and then I'll figure out how I'm gonna curve these. All right, I was able to curve the first one here to shape of the bottom of the fuselage. And if we, uh, you know, look down the end of it here, I think you can see it's it's curved a fair amount. Anyway, so this this worked pretty good. So it's a little bit of a manual process, but what I ended up doing is I I took the form that I used for the inside here to to press this hat section into it, and I took the other side and I cut a curve into it. So I cut a curve that was about an inch and a half deep in the middle. Um, the, the actual curve of this only needs to be about three quarters, but I wanted to go double so I could get you know, a fair amount of spring back. Um, so what I did is I just fit that on top of here so that this part that was already cut to fit the inside here, fit down in here. And then I just kept basically with two hands, pushing it down and pinching it pushing it down and pinching it all the way across and it would slowly curve and that seemed to work pretty well. The other thing I did is I, I cut a block out that matched the top profile of this hat section so that I could slip this over the top and what that allowed me to do was put pressure and hold down on it and then I could actually lift up on the other side and this allowed me to do some target bending on this. For example, there's a little bit more of a curve at the top here than there is across the bottom. So um, I needed to kind of concentrate a little bit more bending in here. And so I just put this over the top, I push down on it, lift up on the other side a little bit, work it a little bit, move this back, work it a little bit. And then I also, when I pushed it all the way down, I would take my rubber mallet and just tap across the top here um, to make sure that I'm just flattening this as much as possible. I gotta go back over it again. Um, this isn't gonna be perfect, but I'm just trying to get it as best I can. Uh, but actually pushing it down and pinching it would stretch the bottom side here uh, pretty well. So anyway, if I take this now and we stick it up here like I did a second ago, it pretty much conforms to the fuselage. I got some straightening on the flange here that I have to do, but in general, it's pretty close. And on the ends here, we do have to joggle, uh, joggle those ends. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, it's got a nice even curve. There's nothing... There's, there's no kinks or, you know, sharp bends or anything in it. It's actually a nice smooth bend. And that's all we really need. It has to conform as well to the fuselage as possible so that we don't have any undulation of the skin on the outside. And then, of course, we have to be able to get that uh, uh, rail cap that goes on top of here, which all of this gets glued together also. So this gets glued to the bottom of the fuselage, then pop riveted in, and then this uh, cap here gets glued on top. So. I'm going to work on the next one and see if I can curve that one. Maybe I can do that one a little bit quicker because this actually took quite a while. Um, but yeah, let me see if I can get the other one bent. Well, I got a bit aggressive on the second one and I ended up putting a kink in it. And it just so happened to be right across one of the bolt holes when I was trying to use my uh, tool to just bend it a little bit further. 
And so even though I got most of it out, I'm going to make a new one because I've weakened that spot right across there. So now I got to start over. Cut a new piece, bend the lips, form it. Yay. All right. I'll make another one of these and we'll try and do as nice a job as I did on this one. All right. So I just used this tool again to bend this third one. Um, of course, I bent the two edges here on my uh, bending brake, um, but then stuck it in here and bent it just like I did before. This actually is proving to work its work quite well. Even with this curve I cut in the top, I was still able to hit it with a rubber hammer and pound it down in there and get it into shape. So now I'm back at least to where I started, where I just need to pop this thing out of here um, and go ahead and start shaping it to this curve on top here. And hopefully I won't uh, kink it like I did this one. I was able to make another one. Took me about an hour, but got another one bent and made to fit here. Um, the fit the fit's pretty good. This is mostly just this little flange that has to be uh, tightened up a little bit and straightened out on the edge just to make sure that it uh, pulls completely flat. But these appear to be pretty good. I might do a little bit more tweaking with them, but uh, the fact is that, that they uh, they look pretty good as far as conforming to the fuselage shape. And they are bent, just it's a little bit tighter bend right in here. So I did have to be very careful. Of course, that's where I kinked this one before. Um, but using that tool, um, of course, the tool is what got me in trouble in the first place. But slipping this over, and I was what I did this time is I made sure that I slipped this over the top centered on top of the screw holes that were already in here so that I wasn't, you know, doing this right where there's a screw there and a screw hole there and then trying to bend it, which is what I accidentally did last time. So as long as I put it here, push it over the top, um, I was able to not only pound it flat on either sides and use this to push it down, um, but I was also able to, you know, lift up on the end here while I was pushing down here and just tweak it just a little bit in the certain spots that I needed. Um, but anyway, so this worked pretty good. Good enough. All right, so I'm gonna finish cleaning these up and then we'll start uh, fitting these into the fuselage and start lining up and see if we can start drilling some holes into the bottom of the fuselage. Um, and actually, I do have to create the joggles on uh, each end, so I'll probably do that next just to have that in there. So I'll have to put the little joggling tool there and clamp it and see if I can get to ends of these to bend up just a little bit to go around the frame one in the front here and to go around frame three in the back here where it gets drilled. I just stuck the two pedal rails in here approximately where they go and of course they fit uh, lengthwise perfect based on the based on the measurements in the manual. Um, they're actually touching frame one and they're touching frame three which I guess means I've got three, frame three installed in the right place. <laughs> All right, so this looks good. I'm going to go ahead and joggle these ends, see if I can continue to keep fitting these in here a little bit better, uh, making sure that I get these this flange uh, as straight as possible and these you know squared up as much as possible so that I can start preparing for drilling the rivet holes through the bottom of the fuselage. Because I think what I'm going to do, these do have to be glued into place, but I think I am going to drill and glue this to the bottom of the fuselage first. Then I'll come back and put the cap that goes on the top here because I want to drill that um, with it in its perfectly curved shape so that when I pop rivet that on the top and glue that on the top that it um, doesn't try to deform these to a different shape. I want it to be whatever shape it is right now. That's what I want it to stay at even when that cap is put on there. So I'll keep working on this. I thought I'd just show you how I was creating these joggles in the end of these frame rails. Um, or these pedal rails. So what I'm actually doing is I'm using the same tool that I've used in the past, but it's a uh, old uh, sawzall blade that I just cut a slot into that I can fit around the end here. Um, and all I do is I make a mark at the end of the material that uh, I need to joggle over. And then I basically align this tool pretty close to that mark there. I give myself a little bit of a gap. Um, but I just slide this over here and you just pull it flat and it starts to create the joggle as you see. Um, but then what I do is I take this over to my um, bench vise and I stick this in the bench vise like this and just clamp it down and it permanently makes that nice joggle that you see here uh, on the end. So I'm just going to do that for the rest of these. I've got the other ends to do that I hadn't done yet so I thought I'd just give you a 
I'll look and show you how that actually works and it's, uh, it's quick and easy. So I was able to put the joggle in the end of my uh, frame rails, as you can see here. Um, these actually turned out really nice. I'm just getting ready now to try and start drilling the holes for these uh, pedal rails. And so what I did is I just marked a center line down the center of some blue tape that I put on, on either side, uh, exactly where that pedal rail was supposed to be centered. And then I offset from there where the rivets are supposed to be installed so that I can place this here, line up the, uh, the rivet holes that are in the uh, rail here with those lines and then just drill through the bottom of the fuselage. Um, if, uh, if you've installed the rivets correctly here along frame three, it should be centered right on this rivet here and this rivet here on frame three. That's basically where the center is and then it's offset from the middle here. I think it's 80 millimeters each direction. So uh, that's how you can know that you've got at least aligned properly. Now, uh, doing all of this and, and doing the tape and doing the lines and everything was much easier since I haven't installed permanently frame one yet. Uh, the manual kind of recommended you should install this, install frame four, and this should be permanently glued into place. But the fact that I just had it all held in with te temporary sheet metal fasteners, I was able to remove it and get all of my, you know, obviously I had to use a, a longer ruler to get in here. And if this frame was sitting here, it would have been very difficult to do all these lines in here. Um, so anyway, I'm just going to keep working on this, see if I can start drilling these holes. And what I'm trying to figure out now is how I'm going to glue and rivet these into place because you should be doing all of that with it on the bottom form and the manual recommends you know possibly drilling big holes in the bottom here so that you can get to it from the bottom side and pop rivet it on there i'm not so sure that's necessary i think as long as i glue it pop rivet it put it back on here and put some weights on here just to make sure that when the glue dries and everything sets that it's you know maintains its shape it should anyway i mean you're supposed to bend these to match the shape of the bottom of the fuselage anyway um, you shouldn't really have any tension on these you know pulling it down or pulling it up one way or another because it's probably how it's going to dry um, you know when the glue dries and the rivets dry that's how it's going to sit so i'm just trying to figure out exactly the procedure i'm going to use for this because i could drill bigger holes through the bottom of this fuselage support panel and put the temporary sheet metal fasteners through. In fact, the temporary sheet metal fasteners would even hold uh, through a hole through this um, uh, hardboard through the bottom skin and through this. I could even Clico straight through it without drilling a big enough hole for the, 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 the Clico to fit down into it. So I'm still debating exactly how I'm gonna do this. Um, I guess for now I'm just going to get all the holes drilled and then I'll figure it out. Maybe what I'll do is flip this upside down and hold these in there with temporary sheet metal fasteners and see how much the skin is conforming to its proper shape versus, you know, needing to be, you know, done on, on the, the, the fixture here. Um, obviously once I get rivets in it, I can set it back on here. So I'm still trying to figure these things out kind of as I go. Uh, but right now I'm just going to get all the uh, holes drilled in the bottom of the fuselage and then we'll go from there. All right, this is actually going pretty well. Um, what I was able to do here is I didn't think the sheet metal fasteners would actually fit between the edge of the hat section here and the side just because of the edge distance, but they actually do fit. So what I'm doing is I'm just drilling through all the way through the hardboard of the supporting frame and just click going uh, these hat sections all the way down through the actual form and what that does is it makes it so that the bottom skin is perfectly flush and fat and flat to the correct curvature but it also makes sure that the hat section that we're installing here for the pedal rails is also matching that curve so now what i can actually do now is take the tape off clean everything up and i can glue these down with the temporary sheet metal fasteners fastened all the way through the supporting frame while the glue dries, which will make it so that when I take those out, these hat sections here uh, should be perfectly to the contour of the fuselage, which is what we're trying to get out of this in the end. So I think what I'm gonna do is glue these down tonight, or at the end of the day before I leave, let them dry overnight, and then tomorrow I'll just take the temporary sheet metal fasteners out one at a time and um, drill it out to an eighth inch and then put in an eighth inch rivet from the outside of the fuselage. I think that's gonna work great. So I'm just going to keep going here and go ahead and drill out the uh, the one on the left side there. And um, I'll show you what it looks like when we're done. 
All right, as you can see, I've got all of the 3.30 seconds holes drilled on these uh, pedal rails. Um, so the next step is going to be to go ahead and prep these rails for gluing into place. So what I'll do is I'll take all of these off, I'll clean them up, I'll go ahead and alodyne the rails, and um, then we'll uh, go ahead and get ready to glue. And what I'll do is I'm just going to glue this exactly like this. So um, I'll just put some wax paper in between the fuselage and my frame. Uh, we'll go ahead and glue these into place after I obviously take the tape off and clean everything up. Um, and then I'm just going to attach these with temporary sheet metal fasteners with glue underneath the rails and just let it dry overnight. Uh, that way I'll be sure that these rails are exactly the shape of the fuselage. Um, I think this is going to be the best way to do this. And then tomorrow what I'll do is I'll just take one uh, sheet metal fastener out at a time. We'll go ahead and drill each one out to an eighth inch and put a pop rivet in it. And then the rails uh, should be in place. The next thing after that is going to be to install the caps that go on top. Those also get glued on and uh, you're also supposed to glue those into place let them sit and dry, then final drill everything out and pop rivet those after the fact. And we'll do that too. I'll show you. We're going to actually create a, a little frame to hold the rails in place and we'll Clico them on each end so that it stays square. And then we'll glue it, put some weight on it, let it sit overnight and uh, that should dry uh, tomorrow night. So I just want to make a quick comment. I, I did go back and look at the plans. I was actually wrong. These holes that go through the uh, fuselage that attach these these uh, pedal rails are supposed to be three thirty seconds. These are not getting drilled out to an eighth inch. The holes that go through the cap that goes on the top are eighth inch, and they're all countersunk, or most of them are. Uh, but uh, these ones that are going through the fuselage, these are just three thirty seconds, and I'm assuming that's why we need to glue these uh, down to the skin. Also, the only ones that get the eighth inch ones are these end ones, which overlap frame one and the uh, ones that overlap over the uh, frame three. Now, what we're also gonna have to do at the same time is I will be gluing in frame one, which we hadn't done yet, um, you know, in order to make sure that I can get glue underneath here and get these pop rivets installed um, on the end here. So we will be gluing in frame one at this point. I don't see any reason not to. Everything else can be done after that from inside with that frame attached. But I am glad that I left it off when I was doing this because this was much easier to do with frame one removed. I just came into the shop this morning and I had let this sit overnight and let the glue dry with the temporary sheet metal fasteners in it, not only for frame one, but also for the uh, the pedal rails here. So I think what I'm going to do now is go ahead and start pulling out the sheet metal fasteners here on frame one. And I'm going to go ahead and get frame one uh, permanently uh, attached with pop rivets. Um, I do have to drill all these out to an eighth inch, so I'll go ahead and do that. And then once that's done, what I'll do is I'll flip it over and we'll start pulling out the temporary sheet metal fasteners for the pedal rails and start putting in the 330 seconds rivets that hold those into place, obviously, from the bottom. All right, I was able to finish um, installing the rivets, eighth inch rivets in frame one. And I've got most of the rivets installed uh, along the pedal rails from the bottom here. I had to skip every few rivets because I actually ran out of 330 seconds rivets, so I got to pick up some more at uh, the store. But um, this turned out really, really good. I'm very happy with this. Yep, these look good. Um, there are eighth inch rivets obviously that were supposed to go here at the ends of these pedal rails and also at the ends down here that connect with frame three. But uh, yeah, this looks really good. We're going to flip it over and then we're going to go ahead and start working on the, uh, the caps that go on top of the pedal rails. So now that we've got the, the pedal rail supports um, glued and pop riveted into place, what we're going to do next is install the cap that goes on top of that which are these two strips of metal that I have here. And what I've done is I've pre-drilled all of the holes in these caps to line up with the, um, with the pedal rail that's below it. And I've also drilled out in between every rivet hole. I don't know if this shows up here, but there's a rivet hole here, a rivet hole here, and here on down. But I've drilled out in between those holes because that's where the, um, the actual pedal, uh, rudder pedal rail tray uh, is going to be adjustable and it's going to have um, an adjustment that allows it to fit down into these holes that are in between the rivets. Um, so what we're going to do is just worry about getting this positioned properly, glued into place, 
Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and pop rivet it into place. And there's gonna be countersunk rivets along this section here because this is what the actual uh, rudder pedal tray slides back and forth on these rails and is adjustable uh, at your feet inside of a Cree Cree. Um, now there's a couple spots where I skipped holes. So I skipped holes here and I also skipped holes here. And the reason I did that is that frame 1B, which goes across right here, has some angled brackets that have to be pop riveted down to this rail also. I left that open so we can make sure that we get the, uh, the frame in here in the correct spot, get those uh, angles positioned, and we'll just go ahead and drill those uh, once we get that frame installed. And the same thing goes here. This is where frame 2 the base of frame two goes across and there's some angled brackets that connect back to these pedal rails here also. So we're gonna drill those later. Not gonna worry about them now, but ahead of frame two and behind frame one B, the rivets on this need to be countersunk. Uh, I believe these rivets on the back here because the pedal rail doesn't uh, go on top of those can be uh, just regular universal head rivets. So what we're gonna do right now is I have to set this up so that we can glue these down into place because what the designer is telling us to do is to actually create kind of a jig that keeps these pedal rails exactly the right distance apart and keeps them flat and we're gonna glue them down then come back after we glue them and drill out the rivet holes um, and then rivet it after the fact because if we glue this into place with epoxy and we have some kind of form to keep these perfectly flat uh, and perfectly straight and parallel uh, we'll make sure that these you know work best for the pedal rail tray that's going to run along here and we can make sure that these are perfectly flat uh, for that purpose um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take a piece of hardboard and using my CNC router I'm just going to route out the shape of these caps that go on there so they'll fit down up in there and what I'll be able to do is just take that piece of hardboard which is pretty easy to conform to a shape and I'll just make sure that these caps fit up into it and I'll, I'll place that on top of here and just put some weights on it and we'll uh, just let this dry overnight and then come back tomorrow and uh, and final pop rivet this into place. Um, I think that's going to be the easiest way to do that and you don't need a CNC machine to do that if you have a table saw You can just take a piece of hardboard and just uh, adjust your table saw down so that you're just creating a small slot um, You know, that's about whatever the width of this is wide um, in two spots that are exactly centered 160 millimeters apart And you can do the exact same thing uh, so I'm gonna go work on um, probably cleaning these up. I am gonna alodyne these before I install them. I'll keep the alodyne off the center on the bottom where it's being epoxied. And I'll probably go back on these pedal rails and just scuff up the tops of these before we glue these down. Um, so anyway, that's what I'm gonna work on next. And I'm also gonna create the, uh, uh, the board that we're gonna use to try and keep these things perfectly flat while the glue is drying and uh, we'll try and uh, get that done right now. I think the only thing I'm gonna do is probably at the front here, or I'm sorry, the back here and the, the front on the end, I'll probably drill through the hardboard and actually put a temporary sheet metal fastener in on the ends here because that'll make sure that the ends of that are exactly centered on top of the existing rails where they need to go and then we'll just put weights across the center of it to, uh, to glue it down on top. So let me start prepping some of this stuff and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm ready to start uh, installing it. Um, I got a few steps further on these uh, pedal rail supports. Uh, what I did is I took the cap that's supposed to go on here and I final drilled an eighth inch uh, hole on each end and just held it in with temporary sheet metal fasteners. I did the same thing on the third hole down from the top. It doesn't really matter which ones. I'm just trying to hold it at the top and the bottom to make sure that um, I can position the support that's supposed to hold these in here square. Uh, with the actual rails that are already there. And then what I did is I cut this out, and this is what I'm gonna use to keep those rails perfectly straight and flat. This one goes on this side. So what I can do is just, this basically just snaps down into this little uh, channel that I cut out here. And the holes line up with what I already drilled. I put this on here and drilled the holes through it so I can put a temporary sheet metal fastener all the way through this support that's going to hold these in here while it's being glued on each end. And so what essentially happens is once we put those in there, we'll take this and we'll, you know, lay this down across here 
put the temporary sheet metal fasteners in there to hold it and then I'll put some weight on this to push it down and the idea is to keep these rails perfectly parallel with one another because I've cut these slots uh, to support it perfectly parallel um, and then uh, make sure that they stay flat and in, in, in other words uh, flat across from each other which is what we really want to have happen because we're going to glue these in without riveting them they're going to glue them in first make sure that they're nice aligned straight then we'll final drill them and pop rivet them when we're done so uh, so I'm just going to keep working on this. I'm getting pretty close. I just have to clean these up and alodyne these, get these ready to be glued in, and then I'll go ahead and put this all back together, test uh, fit everything, make sure I've got some weights I can put on top of here, and then I'll put some glue on and let it sit overnight. So let me, uh, I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, also, I, I cut these holes in here just so I can get my finger down in here and feel exactly where the edge was, just so that I can make sure that it wasn't popped out of this... Uh, of this slot that I created in here. And that slot is is just about, you know, it's a little bit thicker of a slot than the material itself. I think I did about 50 thousandths. Um, and these uh, cap rails here, I think are 40 thousandths. So anyway, let me uh, finish uh, moving forward with um, prepping these parts for glue. And then we'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like right before I glue it. All right, I'm ready to uh, glue these caps on these rails in here. I took the, uh, Aladine off the uh, surface here and I also took a strip down the center of these and just popped them into this plate here So what I'm gonna do is just get some glue onto the rails I'm gonna put a fair amount on there because we want to kind of use this to level these and make sure that they're nice and flat and secured uh, So what I'm gonna do is put some glue on those rails. I'll just take this I'll flip this over I'll Clico it down on the ends uh, with the temporary sheet metal fasteners and then I will just put some weight on it and we should be able to just leave it overnight so let me uh, go ahead and get some glue mixed and I'll show you what it looks like once I get it all set in here. All right I was able to glue the uh, the pedal rail caps uh, in there underneath here and I just put the temporary sheet metal fasteners to hold this in place and what I'm going to do is just put some weights across here uh, whatever I can find in my shop that I can lay across there to let this uh, sit overnight and dry and then I should be able to pop this off tomorrow the pedal rails should be glued on and then we can final drill them out and uh, countersink the the rivets that need to be countersunk and final drill and pop the rest of the pop rivets in to finish this off so uh, yeah I'm just gonna go find some weights and we'll let this sit here and we'll take a look at it tomorrow well, I left a bunch of weight on this overnight. Just came back this morning. And so what I'm gonna do is take all of the weights off here and see if I can get the board popped off of the uh, frame rails. See if they glued into place nice and straight. perfectly parallel uh, to each other um, because they're spaced exactly so when we put that um, uh, the pedal uh, pan on here that's going to slide along here at least uh, you know it will have to be loose in spots and it should be just nice and tight and the fact that this is perfectly flat I mean it's not even off it's not even off at all so that's awesome. And then all I'll do is I'll just drill out these holes, which obviously need to be re-drilled anyway. Uh, but yeah, this uh, using this this hardboard uh, form, this is going to be the best way to do this. And like I said, you don't need uh, you don't need a CNC machine to do this. If you put this on your table saw and you just route out a slot here on either side, you do it with a router or you know table saw, um, or you do it with a router, one of the two. Um, I did cut these holes in here and I actually didn't end up using them uh, because that piece snapped right in here and I set it down, I just knew it wasn't off. And I actually had a hard time getting my fingers in here to feel it anyway. But these holes were very useful for picking this stuff up and getting this in here, especially once I had glue on everything uh, on the bottom there as I was able to put this up in here, 
set this down and align it in the back and then set it down and it was easy to do with the holes in it anyway. So holes aren't really necessary, but uh, it did help me with the installation. Um, but yeah, couldn't be happier with that. That looks, that looks perfect. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is just clean up a little bit of stuff that I have on here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and drill out these holes. Um, I do need to countersink the holes that are between here and here. Um, and of course the holes that I drilled for the uh, adjustment of the pedal uh, pan, um, I'm not gonna drill those out now. I might just drill out the 16th inch holes that's there, but uh, um, those aren't gonna get a rivet hole, so I'll come back later and drill those out. But uh, in, in between each one of those, we'll drill out and put a, uh, a countersunk rivet in. Um, I think the, the four up here and the Five, six back here, those will just get a normal uh, uh, normal head rivet, not a cover sump rivet. Um, I'm actually out of rivets, believe it or not. Uh, I'm actually waiting for some to come in, so I probably won't actually get this finished today. I'm going to go ahead and move forward with uh, starting to work on the uh, frame 1B, which goes across right about here. Uh, and there's a couple supports that go in here for the nose gear. Uh, we're going to try and get some of those things done and then start working on frame two, um, which will be the next project. So uh, let me clean this up and I'll put the rivets in that I have uh, just to get this secured as much as possible. And then when the other, other rivets come in that I've ordered, we'll finish that up. All right, I did what I could to uh, install these um, pedal rail caps. I went ahead and put the um, universal head rivets basically from here back. Supposed to be countersunk from here up to this gap here. Um, I had to skip some here because I don't. I ran out of uh, countersunk rivets, and uh, I put the uh, dome head universal rivets on the end here. So it looks pretty good. Uh, you can see the the holes that are in between these rivets that I have already drilled to be countersunk. That's where the adjustment is for the uh, the pedal rail tray. Um, so there's actually going to be a, a locking mechanism that catches these holes, which will be drilled out eventually um, in these spots to adjust the uh, rudder pedals back and forth. I thought I'd show you, I did get the rivets in the mail today, so I was able to finish uh, not only the 330 seconds rivets that went on the bottom of these uh, pedal rails, but also the countersunk rivets that are installed here on the top. So I got all the rivets installed now, so the pedal rails are actually 100% complete.